Uh, have you seen the last couple of chases India have done? <laughs> yeah, that was the reason. No, I think what we saw the reason, it's very hard to defend. So it's hard to know what a good total is. Um, and, you know, we weren't too far off the mark, probably. Hello. Um, you think, uh, I mean, you lost five wickets, but I think uh, one thirty odd. In the end, you actually came very close to uh, well, perhaps winning, but possibly would have won, could have won if you had not lost so many wickets so early. And was the ball, ball doing a little too much in the beginning? Was it doing at the start? The ball? Um, no, you've got the concept down, Pat, there, not to lose wickets and, and score runs. Um, we, we said, I don't think anyone was out there trying to lose their wickets, so it was the, the... As much as you don't want to lose wickets, there's still 380 on the board, so you can't just sit idly by. So it's a little bit of um, balance of, of attack and defence. Um, full credit to India's bowlers. I thought they, they started really, really well. Bashed the wicket, and that was probably... Um, even in our innings, we saw that if you did that a little bit, there was enough there. We just didn't do it for long enough, consistently enough. They got early breakthroughs, something we haven't been able to do in our um, when, when we've been defending totals, and that just put us on the back foot a little bit. But you know, full credit the way Maxi Watto um, under under a bit of duress, and then uh, Jimmy at the end, the way they they clawed us back. We were. Uh, We'd, we'd sort of set a few goals, I think, of where we wanted to be run, runs-wise, and we probably ended up ahead of them with just a couple with too many wickets down. How much did you miss Mitch and Doug? Yeah, it would have been nice to have Mitch there today. George, uh, what did you learn about chasing such big totals today? I mean, what, I know it went down by 57 runs, but what did you really learn from it? Don't you mean that you for 10 does close the target? I don't think we learned anything we didn't already know. You need you need your top order or someone in your top order to probably score, you know, get get you on track early. Uh, and if you can get partnerships, what we're seeing on these grounds is if you've got wickets in hand late, you can score anything. My understanding is the rules were changed because people felt that the game was getting boring. Um, so I'm not sure people watching would find today boring, would they? Yeah, absolutely. If it continues, but you don't, you don't, you won't get wickets like that in Australia, and you won't get them like that in 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 South Africa. So, so it does depend a little bit on conditions. And then when you get those conditions in in Australia, then maybe the two new balls play a part, and the team might be three for thirty, and you've got to find a way to get to to two hundred and fifty. Um, you know, so it's it's different everywhere. It's just a matter of um, striking the balance. I don't mind the odd game like this. Uh, the, the challenge for us has been working out what is, how do you how do you talk to your bowlers and how do you work out who's bowled well, how do you work out who's who's done their job and uh, until we get more feedback on you know how many of these scores get chased down, how many times teams get these scores, it's going to be hard to actually work out you know what's what's uh, what's par. Yeah, not sure. He's obviously sore. I mean, we saw that, but we won't know anything until he gets home and gets it properly scanned and looked at. Yeah, it's pretty I mean, extraordinary. Yeah, I mean, as you said, it's the whole series has been pretty extraordinary. There's been some amazing stuff done. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to sound biased because I've, I've, I've played a lot of cricket with Jim, but I, I just can't speak highly enough of him. You know, I don't know what number, how many games he's played of one-day cricket, but for him, to, I mean, he almost leads our bowling attack in terms of he bowls in power plays, he, 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 you know, he bowls at the start, he bowls at the death for it. He, he loves that responsibility. Uh, and I think we've just seen him come into his own with the bat as well, with a bit of confidence. 
um, you know, teams will certainly fear him. And so the, just that energy he brings uh, is, is wonderful. Uh, the competitiveness he brings is, is something you, you, know, you love playing with. Um, he's got a pretty bright future, doesn't he? He's an incumbent test player as well. He played at uh, Major's debut um, at the Open. Uh, he did game five with the Ashes. Um, he would, would he have found a place in, in, in the Ashes line up um, coming up this summer? No, certainly not. I don't think, and and that you know, that balance comes up. Um, but you know, if you would you would assume if he was in the mix at the Oval, he'd still be in the mix now. Just a uh, uh, word about Shikha that one. Do you think he went a little bit over the top, mimicking the Watson injury for uh, on the field? Yeah, he's pretty animated, isn't he? I mean, he's obviously passionate about how he goes about it. Um, I think we've, there's a bit of that on both sides. There's guys who are obviously very passionate, and there's. A lot riding on the on the line, um, but there's a fine line there, I guess. It's you know, sometimes the art of uh, the art of winning is as hard to learn as the art of losing, isn't it? Uh, of course, that is, uh, just a word on uh, Lloyd Sherman's innings, and uh, secondly, uh, have you ever seen seems so simple? Just from where we were sitting, it seemed very simple. It didn't. It? Yeah, it was extraordinary. I think the record was smashed, wasn't it? In a, most sixes in a game. <laughs> uh, I wrote. I thought wrote it better beautifully. He. Uh, he summed it up. He wasn't actually that quick early on. Now I don't know what he. I think it looked to him and he had a, brought his hundred up, and he was probably only a run a ball. Um, things got a bit busy after that. So you know, extraordinary innings. He's had a he's had a wonderful series. Uh, he's obviously flourishing at the top of the order. Um, you know, he'd certainly be one who's who's in the mix for um for that spot that'll open up after the great man departs in a couple of tests. Spot on. And my run out was embarrassing. There's no other way to describe it. And what is, uh, whatever, you went 2 2 and then it was a close match, or was you make a close match? What would this mean, a lesson uh, for the Ashes series for this players here? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure there'll be any lessons from this game heading into the Ashes. It'll be in hell of a, hell of a uh, an Ashes test match if that's the sort of cricket that's played. <laughs> No, as I, I mean, as I said the other day, if if, if Michael Clark, Darren Lehman, and John Inverity think that I should be there, that I'd love to be there. Um, you know, I think there's a couple, there's a handful of guys here who, who would love to be there. There's been some great hundreds scored back at home in Shield cricket over the last few days. Um, those guys would be desperate to be there from guys who've been on a lot of A tours. So um, no, it's, there's still a couple of Shield games to go. So I would imagine that um, th that spot's up for grabs. And, and just to touch on. The Well, no, I think I think that's a really hard one because how do you? I'm not I'm not sure you can predict injuries. If, I'm sure if we asked Shane this morning, he he would have said he was fine. Your series went on so well. So what are the positives that you've taken from the series? Yeah, heaps of positives. It was a hell of a series. I think I think our batting's been outstanding right throughout. Um, I mean, obviously on very very good batting wickets, but um, particularly after. The test matches here, I think there was a, a, a conception or a, a misconception that early on that we might struggle uh, to play over here. So I think we answered that um, rather emphatically. Uh, just the continued development of some of our guys who haven't played a lot of cricket for Australia. You know, we don't actually have many, there's some, there's some experienced guys in terms of how much cricket they play, but they haven't played much international cricket. So to see... Um, to see James Faulkner continue to play well um, and a couple of good innings from Finchie. I, I like the way Finchie and Husey work together at the top. Um, good to see Nathan Kuldenile get another game under his belt. Uh, I think Glenn Maxwell's had an outstanding series. You know, I think he's someone who's, who's 
coming into his own. Um, the more we see his belief and, and what he can do in a game, he's going to be a real match winner going forward. So lots of heaps of positives. Um, you know, It'd be easier to look at it and say we lost the series, but I think coming here was always going to be a real challenge. Uh, there's, as I said outside, there's a reason that India are the number one team in the world. They're, they're, they are the best one-day side in the world. They're going to be very, very hard to beat. So for us to come here, and at least I feel um, we can go home knowing we've played some good cricket, we've improved in areas, um, we've learned a bit more, I think we've grown a bit more as a team. That's, that's pretty exciting still. Last question. Uh, just you only got a couple of days till the Shield starts off once you get home, but you're, you're certain to go and play for Tasmania as soon as you get home? Yeah, yeah, so I think there's... Oh, I couldn't tell you the numbers, but I reckon probably <laughs> half the guys are, are heading back and playing, um, playing the Shield game. So I'm not sure many of the bowlers are, but I'm pretty sure nearly all the batters are. Thank you.